Hello. In this lecture, we're going to discuss bottom slope effects. Really, this is bottom slope effects part one. We'll deviate from the usual format a little bit because this is a document that I've already put together to, to explain bottom slope effects. And I'll go through this document and add some annotations and updates. So first, you need to ask yourself the question. And if the answer is yes, you may proceed to both of these questions. Is the foundation above the anchor? So do we have some sort of sort of sort of sort of sort of configuration where this is exaggerated, but our foundation is above the anchor and there is an upward slope between the two of them. And our your sliding factor of safety checks not passing. Do you, do you need to go through the effort of including bottom slope effects? Or I would also add, are you interested in, in um, you know, a more optimal or more custom above, 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 above. So first we'll go through the normal sliding uh, free body diagram. The total driving and resisting forces can be calculated using static and static and static and static and static and static and static analysis. Using a free body diagram of associated loads acting on the gravity anchor are shown here. So we remember our horizontal forces are horizontal cable force on the anchor, horizontal forces on the tower that are, are that's a resultant of the difference um, in the backstay and mainstay forces due to friction that we discussed earlier in the course and our active pressure from the earth, 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 earth. Our resisting forces are just going to be, per usual, that total vertical load times this, um, sliding coefficient of friction with the soil. And we've already discussed as well, you could, 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 you could add uh, sidewall friction into this equation as, as well. But that is, that is a separate term and does not need to be, uh, be considered here in this moment. So when we want to consider the bottom slope effects, um, or essentially you can think and think of this as a block getting pulled uphill, um, we want to actually consider that you know get a block getting pulled slightly uphill is going to be a bit, bit harder than a block getting pulled along a flat surface, which we're, which we are originally assuming to make the calculations easier. So to do this, we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to, we're going to, we're going to rotate the entire coordinate plane to compare these forces in the direction of the soil slope. And I'll be using this uh, term psi to indicate the angle of that bottom slope, which you can find using trigonometry of your foundation anchor elevations and the length of the abutment. So step one we did would be to convert the horizontal forces acting on the soil slope. The example here is shown just for pH anchor. So in order to convert our horizontal anchor force here from a purely purely horizontal force to acting up the slope here, pH anchor prime, we're going to just take that pH anchor times the cosine of psi. Next, we'll convert our ramp weight component in the same style. Um, we will take our P ramp prime to be our P ramp normal times sine of psi. Note this is sine because uh, the P ramp is a vertical force versus P inch or pH anchor being a horizontal force. And in theory, our normal force reaction P ramp normal is going to be the equal and opposite reaction of the weight of our, of our ramp normal to that slope. So because of that, 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 slope not being completely horizontal, the normal force reaction is going to have some component of it that is helping our. So I do have a note here that in theory, the uh, PV normal could be up to um, PV cos psi, PV being vertical forces, um, which would be up to 95% of PV. To be conservative, we'll take the, the normal force as 50% of the vertical forces, 
because we are assuming 50% of the vertical load contributes to a normal reaction with a small, 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 small component acting against our vertical forces. Now we can come and sum our horizontal forces and our react, 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 and now it becomes the following equation. We'll keep P active uh, at its full capacity, and we'll keep pH tower at its full capacity. This is to be slightly conservative because we don't completely understand the directions of these forces um, and haven't done a deeper analysis. We, we want to keep these as their, their maximum um, their maximum value in their horizontal direction. But the converted forces, pH anchor and P ramp prime, um, now will act act against each other. So this new term in blue, P ramp, 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 ramp uh, that includes P ramp, was not in the previous equation for um, this, the static analysis of sliding. So now we have our pH anchor in the um, slope direction minus our ramp um, reaction, the component of the reaction is adding to capacity. And once again, we're multiplying that by 50% uh, to be conservative because we don't know exactly uh, the direction of that reaction, considering it's on soil, not a, um, that compacted soil, and we're not gonna assume it's completely flat and that normal reaction, is, that normal force is exactly um, normal to that slope especially if there's some compressing of the soil, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I won't go into that, 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 here because, because not analysis we've performed. In addition, we need to do this in the opposite direction as well with our vertical component, 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 component. And here, we won't convert our abutment weight, vertical force on the anchor and vertical force on the tower to be conservative as well. Well, um, they really only make a minor impact if you were to do this out. And if you really want to sharpen the pencil and make an argument for these, these calculations, they could be tra transformed as well. So once again, looking at um, P ramp, we, 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 we have the same diagram with, this, with the normal force, um, and we'll take P ramp prime as the normal force times the cosine of psi. Remember above, we we're taking it as the sine because it's the horizontal direction we're looking, 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 and we'll use sine of psi pi, 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 times 50% to get that vertical component of the pH anchor uh, reaction. Once again, we'll sum up, 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 sum up our vertical forces um, and multiply that by the sliding um, coefficient of friction as we've done before with soil to get the total resisting force. And notice that new term added in here, the pH anchor percent of sine psi. And here, it's a small mistake, the equation is set up such that everything is, all vertical forces are being converted um, into the direction of the soil slope using cosine of psi. Remember, to be a bit more conservative, we took the P abutment, PV tower, and PV anchor out and considered their, their full value. Um, we were just converting ramp. Oops. So our new factor of safety can be found um, just by that uh, Rn prime divided by Rs prime 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 prime, 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 prime our um, resisting forces over our um, our reaction force. And just to note here, if your sliding factor safety is still not working, remember to consider some of the other things we've already talked about in this this module: adding sidewall friction and the weight of undisturbed soil um, between the ramp walls. And also know this effect can be detrimental when the foundation is below, 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 below the ramp wall. And this will transition us into the next section. But if we think about it, it we can't 
take the, the bottom slope effects, Consider that the ramp, 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 ramp walls here are transferring force as compression struts. That the anchor is pushing them uphill. Uh, we can't take the benefit of that, of that, of that, of that, of that. Of that, of that, of that. Now, considering the the disbenefit is if we have the opposite, with our foundation below our anchor, and we have to consider these ramp walls as compression as tension struts, and that they're also pulling the anchor downhill. So this can also be detrimental when you are considering um, a geometry where the anchor is above the foundation. And we'll talk about that a bit more in the neck, 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 neck section because it is quite more, uh, more complex of an analysis.